So our gross income is the amount that, that we get paid by our employer before they start deducting taxes. And then the capital gains is when we sell a large valued asset like our house, like some real estate we have, like our investments for a large profit. But what does that word profit mean? Money that's higher than what we spent on it, yeah? Okay, so it's money higher than what was spent to get the asset. Example, you paid $100,000 for a piece of land, but sold it for $150,000. Profit, $50,000, okay? It's the money above what you paid for it, okay? Does that make sense? Anybody have a question about that? Okay, another kind of income that some people get and some people don't is tips. Usually, in food and beverage industry. Okay, so like the waitresses and waiters, but sometimes it can be for a service industry. Industry. Um, like your nail places and your hair places, and you tend to give them tips, okay? Tips are not considered base pay. They are extra above what your employer is paying you on an hourly rate, or they're extra above your salary, which is the fixed amount for the year. Okay. And then one of the last um, kinds of income is Gambling wins, okay? Gambling wins are not considered investments, okay? They're not considered investments. Um, so, you know, once you're 18, you can go to the Indian casinos and you could do the slot machines or whatever. Um, there are certain areas that are not alcohol-based, so the 18-year-olds can do it. Or you can buy a lottery ticket or whatever. That's windfall money. They call it windfall money because it happens like lightning striking. It's not something that happens um, on a regular basis, okay? Also not considered part of your base pay, okay? So these are all types of income. All of those are types of income. Money that gets added up that you earn, that you get. That's a plus. Then they have something on the tax form called adjusted gross income. Okay. Adjusted gross income is after adding up all of these things, after adding up all of the types of income, okay, you are allowed to subtract certain expenses, okay? Um, first type of expense is real estate interest and real estate interest on, sorry, mortgage. Okay, so if you have a loan for the property, you're allowed to subtract back off the loan, back off of your income, the interest you're paying to the bank 
on the mortgage and they send you a document. You get a document to prove this number, okay, from the bank. Okay, another thing you're allowed to subtract out is student loan interest. And this is interest paid on loans for post-secondary education. Um, what does that mean, post-secondary education? Okay, that's trade school, that's college, that's the things after high school. So it's not just for college expenses. That you, when you go to a trade school, you can get student loans to help pay for the trade school, to pay for the um, tech schools, to pay for that stuff. And if you do get a loan, they let you deduct from your income, they let you subtract it from your income number to show you have less income because you want a lower income because it means you're lower on their pay scale for taxes you have to pay, right? That they have this chart that has these brackets and you wanna make sure you're in the lower side of the bracket instead of the higher side of the bracket because the lower side of the bracket pays less. Okay, any questions about that so far? Okay. So another thing that you're allowed to subtract from your gross income so you don't have to pay as much money to the bank is money paid in to certain types of retirement accounts. Oops, I got there. Okay, money paid into certain types of retirement accounts. And tax preparers have this list of the ones that are approved and not approved. Okay. All right, another thing that you can deduct from your income is alimony. Anybody know what alimony is? You guys might not know what that word means. Yep, it's the money you get from the from your ex-spouse to help support you. Because um, sometimes one spouse has you know gone ahead and done their career and things like that. And the other one stayed home with the kids or whatever. And or they only got a part-time job so they could help with the kids. And it ends up leaving it so one of the spouses leaving the marriage has a higher income than the other one. So there's this discrepancy, they call that a discrepancy between the incomes. So they make the one who's making more money pay the one making less money for time being, for a certain amount of time, so that they come a little bit more even, okay? Not child support, it's not child support, it's spousal support is what that is, okay? Alimony is support for the spouse that is making a lower income. Okay, let me handle one thing. Okay, so alimony is payments from an ex-spouse after a divorce, as a way, oops, to make up 
for the difference in their incomes. Okay. And it's the higher spouse pays the lower spouse to balance it out. Okay. So those are things like, so you add up all the money you brought in and then you get to start subtracting off that and adjusting that money. Because like I said, remember there's tax brackets. It's a form that has this chart and you want your money to land in a lower chart, end of the chart, not the higher end of the chart. Okay, next topic on taxes is the fact of what they call deductions and exemptions. Okay, deductions and exemptions. Deductions and exemptions. Okay, so there's after you go ahead and you total up your money, then you get to subtract these things and adjust that total for money, you get to adjust even more. You get to adjust even more. And that's where the deductions and exemptions come in. There is a thing called a standard deduction, which is a fixed amount the government allows anyone, no, government allows um, taxpayers to subtract from their adjusted income, okay? Okay. to reduce their tax liability. Okay, taxpayers, let's be together. Okay, to reduce your liability. Because remember, you wanna have it subtracting and subtracting and subtracting so that you have just a tiny bit that they say you owe them money on and you have a tiny bit of tax and maybe you get some back. Okay, so standard deduction though, is used for the person who doesn't have as many things they can subtract if they itemized Item, okay, and we're going to talk about what those things are that you can itemize, okay. So usually the, the people that don't have much, you can itemize, let's go here with it. Itemized deductions. Spelling. Itemized deductions. Things you can subtract extra. Donations to charity. You get a percent of that that you can subtract. Real estate taxes. You get a percentage back for those. Um, student loan interest comes back again in another form. You get a different number in this section for that. Um, medical, dental, vision coverage costs above what the employer pays. Okay. Um, and 
above what the insurance company, I can't spell today, covers. Okay, so if you don't have a lot of those things, you can itemize. You're young, you're single, you're doing a little bit here and a little bit there. Um, then it's worth it just to take their flat number. And there is a, when you're going to do your taxes, there's this comparison chart you can fill out that shows you whether you should go standard versus itemized. And from one year to the next, you could be itemized, you could be standard and it's okay. Because as we get older and we start doing more charity and we start having more things going on in our lives, um, sometimes one year it's a really big extra expenses out for medical. Um, by the extra expenses, I'm talking about things like your insurance for your dental covers um, like $300 for a crown, which is when you have a tooth that breaks and they have to put a fake one over the top, okay. crown. So, but the crown with the dentist costs $600. Well, there's that extra 300 that you got to pay out of your pocket. That's the extra medical I'm talking about. Or um, you were in a car accident and your car insurance covered up to $30,000 of expenses, right? And you had to spend another 15,000 for rehabilitation and therapy and stuff because maybe it was a big car accident, that extra money, okay? Not the money for the premiums, not the money for the premiums, the money above what the insurance company gives you. So there's extra going out of your pocket, okay? So there are different times in your life when, and I'm gonna probably put a space here because it's driving me crazy having this on this row. We're going to move to another page. Um, there are times in your life when you're going to be doing a lot of these things, charity, and you have a home, so you have real estate taxes, and you have children at home, so they're taking extra money out. So it's worth it to itemize your deductions. And from one year to the next, you can flip back and forth between standard versus itemized. Okay, you can flip back and forth between standard and itemized. Any questions? Any questions? Okay, hit the turn in for the Google Classroom then, please. I should see you turning in. So let's go look um, at what today's assignment is. A couple people have sent private messages. Please make sure you read those. Mm -hmm. Google Classroom for you guys. Okay, so I should see that. The um, 16 people needing to get their notes turned in. Let me go see. I got 11 of you. Come on, get turned in. Damien, Luis, 
Juan, Maria, Joseph, let's get turned in. Okay, let's go look at what our activity is for today. Time to just hit turn in, guys. Done or not. Some points are better than zero points. Get them turned in. Alicia. So it says that you are gonna use the links below to complete each scenario situation. These are each a different simulator, okay? You're gonna be filling out the fake tax return basically is what you're doing based on information they give you. When you get to the very end, when you get to the very end of each of the three scenarios, you are going to be taking a screenshot of that entire page. So make sure that the size of your print allows you to have the whole last page of each of the scenarios show up. So that might mean you have to go up to these dots in the Google Classroom and change this percentage so it gets smaller so then you can fit the whole thing you need on the screen. Once you have all three of those screenshots, you're gonna create a Google Doc, put one for each page. So there's three pages right there. You might need to resize it so that they fit one per page. Okay. And then you turn that into the Google Classroom. You attach and turn it into the Google Classroom. Any questions? Any questions? Yes, each one is a different situation. They all look the same, because but they're all different situations. So when you click in, they're gonna be telling you different information. It was the same site, but the setup for each scenario was different. Does that make sense? Once you get into it and you start working with it, you will see that the details for each situation are changing how much the person made, changes, things like that. Joseph, why are your notes not turned in yet? And um, why do I see no attachment to some people's assignment for their notes? Or they turned in a blank notes for zero credit, I guess. Okay, so when you get into them, they'll be telling you different information about a different person. Do we got it? Okay, are we good? So I'm gonna stop sharing.